we find that we are able to reach the desired outcome with such little effort. In moments of motivation, we're able to reach the intended outcome with less effort. And then in moments of dullness, in moments where we lack inspiration, in moments where we lack that same motivation, reaching that same outcome requires much more effort. And this is a norm in every field in life. This is a norm in every niche in life. This is a norm in relationships. In relationships there are moments where everything flows with ease. And then there are moments where more work is required in order for the relationship to grow. This is the same in a business, where there are moments where the business is blossoming and growing in times of sales. And then there are also moments where we just want to survive. The same notion in the same presence is present within our spirituality. That there are moments of motivation. And there are moments where we are so inspired that we are ready to do anything to reach our outcome. And by doing so little, we're able to feel so fulfilled, like how it is in the month of Ramadan. However, greatness is given to us in our religion, not simply because we do what we do be since we are motivated. A business does not become successful because it only moves forward when, it's inspired, when the business people and the entrepreneurs are inspired, or where the relationship only blossoms when people are excited. Rather, in order for things to continue moving forward, where there, is, where there is an absence of motivation, there needs to be a presence of consistency. Where there is an absence of inspiration, there needs to be the presence of a dedicated outcome that we work for, regardless of how much effort is needed. Now the effort, the amount of effort may need to increase for that same outcome, but that is the definition of consistency. That is the definition of what our deen has given us in the form of istiqama, in the form of where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was told, فَاسْتَقِمْ كَمَا أُمِرْتْ That you remain consistent, like how you were commanded. When the Prophet of Allah Himself Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says in a hadith, that this deen has high points, it has peaks and valleys, where there are moments where we feel like we're flying, and then there are moments that we feel like we're struggling just to make it to our obligations of our deen. This is a norm of our spirituality. Rahmanullah anhu once leaves his home and he starts walking to the Prophet Sallallahu masjid and he feels like he has reached a level of hypocrisy. And as he's walking, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu meets him on his path towards the masjid and he says to him, where are you going at this time? He says, I'm going to the Prophet. He says, why? Because nafaqa, alhamdulillah. I feel like I have become a hypocrite. He says, why would you say such a thing? He says, because when I'm with the Prophet and I'm sitting with him and I'm in his presence, it feels like I am literally seeing Jannah in front of me. And I can feel the beauty of Jannah. I can smell the fragrance of it and I can see Jahannam in front of me. I'm so inspired. And the moment I leave his presence and I go back home and I sit with my family and my children, I am overwhelmed by joy and relaxation that I feel like I have forgotten about that feeling of Iman, that euphoric experience of sitting with the Prophet Wasallam. This is hypocrisy, Abu Bakr. Radiallahu anhu. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu looks at him and says, well, if that's the case, and I'm a hypocrite too. And they both come to the Prophet Wasallam, and they share their concern, and they voice their issues. And the Prophet smiles at them and he responds by saying, this is not hypocrisy. If you were to stay at the level of Iman that you were, when you're sitting with me, you would have angels come to shake your hands. Because that is not an intended goal. The intended goal is to remain consistent and dedicated to the cause and the outcome. And that cause and outcome is the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the month of Ramadan, we require less effort to come to the masjid, but the outcome is to come to the masjid. Now regardless of how much effort is needed, we will still need to fulfill that same outcome. And this is what allows us to become consistent. In the month of Ramadan, doing reading Qur'an requires less effort. And outside the month of Ramadan, it requires a little bit more effort. But the outcome is the same. And the outcome is needed for us regardless of where, what part of the year that we're in. And the beauty of it is, 
is that regardless, the beauty of the outcome is based on how difficult it is for us, Allah gives us more reward. If it's more difficult for us, there's more reward for us. And that is the beauty of istiqama. The Prophet speaks about a person who walks and comes further from their home to the masjid. The further they are, the more reward they get because it's harder for them to come. The Prophet of Allah speaks about people who struggle to recite the Qur'an because they don't have the fluency and the ability to just open it up and confidently recite it. And he says about these people, These people have doubled the reward. The reward of our deed is doubled. It increases when the act is more difficult for us. So now in the presence, in the absence of natural motivation, that we had in the month of Ramadan. Natural inspiration, there needs to be a presence of consistency, which drives us towards reaching the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why the Prophet whenever he dealt with low moments in his life, as all of us deal with, moments where he lost his inspiration, where he, with that inspiration, diminished, where he felt cornered and he felt isolated, where people started saying things about him, and people started mocking him. It is one to call someone a name that perhaps the community sees him or her to be. And the other is being a Sadiqul Amin, the greatest person living in that community. And then now your name has completely changed and people are chanting words and slanders against you that you would never have imagined, such as Majnoon or such as Kahin, sorcerer and a crazy person attacking his family, physically and verbally, mentally being abused, emotionally being drained. And at this moment the Prophet is told, وَلَقَدَ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّكَ يَضِيقُ صَدْرُكَ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ We know that the going has become tough. We understand that it's not as easy to wake up in the morning and pray Fajr. We understand that it's not as easy for you to walk through the streets of Mecca and not, be, not feel like you're being attacked. We understand it. But recognizing that doesn't mean that it diminishes the need of doing it. Recognizing the difficulty does not become a scapegoat for not fulfilling the task that is at hand that Allah has given us. It's difficult because it's supposed to be difficult. It's difficult because it requires a sense of effort that deems a sense of reward that nothing else will give us in this world. We know that that happens to you. But it's okay. وَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ you continue making your effort and you continue plowing through until you reach the level of conviction that you need to reach and this yaqeen is, refer is in reference to death. وَعْبُدْ Rabbak. You continue making your effort. You continue trying regardless of how difficult it becomes. And one of the greatest mantles and symbols of this consistency was Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu that his support to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam was not associated or contingent upon his state that he was in. It wasn't that his support was present because his life was easy. It wasn't so that his support was present because he had wealth or because he had other forms of support from his community. His support for the Prophet wasallam was consistent throughout his entire life that went through many conditions. In Makkah al-Mukarramah, when the Prophet first announced his prophethood, he was the first supporter. And one could say, well, yes, he was the first supporter because he had everything. He was very wealthy in Makkah. He was one of the most wealthiest merchants of Makkah. And in this moment of being at the mountaintop, at the peak that a person could aspire to be at financially and also in, in, the, in, the, in the sense of the respect that he was given from his community, he goes out and he uses all of his wealth to buy slaves and to free them, to see people who are struggling and support them. Or the Prophet ﷺ walked by Bilal anhu as he was being tormented by his, by his master, Umayya ibn Khalf and his, the, the master that he was given because he purchased him. And as he's being tortured by him, the Prophet ﷺ walks by. And he sees and he hears the voices of Bilal echoing in his ears where he continues to say, Ahad, Ahad. And he looks at the companions around him and he says, Is there no one amongst you that will wish to go help this person and free him? And Abu Bakr saw that as a moment of opportunity, rushed towards his home, 
per took his money out, rushed towards Bilal and the leader of, or the master of Bilal and the owner in Umayyah ibn Khalf. And he says, I wish to purchase this, this slave of yours. And he responds by saying that I will give him to you for 10 dirhams. And Umayyah ibn Khalf asks for 10 dirhams. Abu Bakr anhu takes the money out of his pocket and he gives it to him. And Umayyah responds to him, this disbeliever and this oppressor. He says to him, that, Oh Abu Bakr, I saw you to be a very intelligent person. That I thought of you to be very smart, intelligent. But perhaps I was wrong. He said, why would you say that? He says, because if you had haggled and bargained me, and you would, have, you would have asked for me to sell this slave of mine to you for a single dirham, I would have sold him to you for a single dirham. He has no value in front of me. He is worth nothing to me. I would have given him to you for a single dirham, but you chose not to haggle and bargain. You know, Bakr looks at him, radiallahu anhu, and he says to him, well, Umayyah, let me tell you something. I thought of you to be an intelligent person. I presumed you to be intelligent. But you obviously showed that you are not because if you had haggled and bargained with me and had demanded for me to give you a hundred dirhams, I would have given you a hundred. But you settled with ten because I recognize his value. And in Makkah al-Mukarramah, his support was consistent. When the Prophet ﷺ went for Mi'raj and he returned from meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a moment of the night, and he traveled throughout the lands of Makkah and Baytul Maqdis, and then he ascended through the seven heavens and he met Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he returned in a portion of the night and when the people of Mecca were informed of this and when the Prophet told Abu Jahl about this that I just came from Baytul Maqdis and I just came from meeting Allah I went through the heavens and Abu Jahl scoffed at him and he started to mock him and he said to him that you think we are crazy to believe that you can travel all of this land and ascend to the heavens and return in a portion of this night. Who do you think we are? And he laughs at the Prophet and in his mind he takes it as such that this is a moment to expose this man. This is a moment to finally tell the people how outlandish his claims are. And he rushes to his best friend because if he can, if he can convince Abu Bakr Everyone is convinced. And he rushes to him. And he says to him, Oh Abu Bakr, what would you say about a person? What would you say about a person who claims to travel from Mecca all the way to Baytul Maqdis in Palestine? And in that same portion of a night, ascend the heavens, meet the Creator, and return in the same portion of that night. What would you say about that person? You know, Bakr radiallahu anhu, once again, founded in his presence of consistency, not simply in his presence of being motivated. Motivated people have hits. Disciplined people who have consistency will always make it to their desired outcome because they don't care how much effort it takes to reach that outcome. They're consistent in their approach. And he asks and he says to him, well, who made this claim? He says, your friend, your companion, you know, Bakr radiallahu anhu says, in qalahu sadaqa. If he said it, I believe it. I don't need him to tell me. Even if it comes from a tongue of a person like you, Abu Jahl, who is amongst the worst people who has walked this earth after Fir'aun, I will still believe it because the Prophet said it. Consistency. When the Prophet ﷺ was given permission to perform hijrah, and at this time, Abu Bakr anhu does not have wealth. He does not have the community support. He does, uh, he does not have the same level of pull that he used to have. Our strength and our talent should be used to support our deen. But even when we are low, it doesn't mean that we can't support deen. The strength that we possess is not through our abilities that are exterior of our deen. The strength that we possess is, is confined and is synonymous to our strength that we have to our deen. The presence of our deen is what gives us strength. The presence of our a'mal, the presence of our spirituality is what allows us to walk with confidence. It's what gives us a presence to walk with. It's what gives us a passion to live with. And Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu, though he has lost so much, he still has his passion. He will still be consistent. And the Prophet of Allah walks inside of his home and he knocks on the door and he enters the home and he says, Ya Abu Bakr, 
إن الله قد أذن لي للهجرة. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has granted me permission to perform hijrah. Abu Bakr al-Anu has very less to give, but he still has himself. And he looks at the Prophet and he says, As-suhbatu ya Rasulullah. As-suhbatu ya Rasulullah. Please let me be with you on this trip. Allow me to be your companion on this trip. Not on a journey where there are roses and rivers and different types of things that you would look forward to, but on a trip where the entire Makkah is looking for you dead or alive, let me go with you on this trip. And the Prophet of Allah nods his head in approval. And Aisha radiallahu anha says, مَا عَلِمْتُ أَنَّ أَحَدًا قَدْ يَبْكِي مِنَ الْفَرْحِ حَتَّى يَوْمَ إِذَنِ I didn't know that it was possible for someone to cry out of happiness until that day. Because the moment the Prophet informed him that you could accompany me on this trip, he cried out of joy. As-suhbatu ya Rasulullah. How Iqbal would say, Parwana ko charagha hai, bulbul ko phula bas, siddiq ke liye khuda ka rasool bas. All he needed was the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because the Prophet became his motivation. He became his strength. And we fast forward to Medina Munawwara. And now Abu Bakr has absolutely nothing. He has left everything. And he's walking through the streets of Mak Medina looking for food where Umar radiallahu anhu walks the side of his home and hunger removes him from the, the comfort of his bed. In the middle of the night, he is walking through the streets and he bumps into Abu Bakr. He says, yeah, Abu Bakr, what are you doing? He says, Ajur, hunger has forced me to leave my bed. The same Abu Bakr, the same person who was one of the wealthiest in Makkah al Mukarramah. So this, the, the state wasn't the same, but the response was the same. Our responses to Allah should not change based upon the states that we live in. Our response to Allah needs to be consistent. In moments, of, in moments that where we are at the mountaintops, there is shukr. In moments that we fall, there is sabr. This is why Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah says that a believer is not recognized by their states, they're recognized by their responses. A believer is identified through the way they respond to Allah, not the way that they are living in. Because a poor person and a rich person could equally be in their, they could be at the same level of belief. If the person struggling is patient, and the person who is thriving is, he is, he is grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in Madinatul Munawwara, the demand came in the battle of Tabuk, that where we need money. Umar radiallahu anhu was doing well. And on that day, he said to his companions, that I spoke to myself and I said, that today will be the day that I defeat Abu Bakr. That I have moved past him. How Ali radiallahu anhu used to say, that in the galaxy of the companions, it was Abu Bakr and Umar who were competing, and the rest of us were just watching. Because it was their show to run. Umar radiallahu anhu says, today I will defeat him. And I come with so much money for the battle of Tabuk, which was a very difficult battle and expedition. And after presenting everything that I had to present, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu walks in and he comes in front of the Prophet sallam, and he presents him with what he has had or what he brought and the Prophet does not ask him how much wealth have you brought because he brought very little rather he asked him "Ma abqayta li ahlik what have you left for your family and he responds by saying Allahu wa rasuli that I left Allah and his Prophet similar response different state the month of Ramadan comes and it goes the state changes, but the response needs to be the same. The response still needs to be such that we work towards pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this comes with a demand of istiqama. And that istiqama doesn't mean that we do what we were doing in Ramadan, but we do a portion of it. And that portion is enough to earn the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is impossible to remain at the same state, but it is, also, it is also impossible for us to fall back to where we were. There needs to be a sense of progress. Because progress is synonymous to success. If we're not progressing, we are regressing. May Allah make us amongst those that Allah says about إِنَّ الَّذِينَ قَالُوا رَبُّنَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ اسْتَقَامُوا فَتَنَزَّلُوا عَلَيْهِمُ الْمَلَائِكَةِ People that live with Allah in their life. And they remain consistent with their effort. They remain consistent with their belief. Allah says about these people when they leave this world. They are showered with blessings from angels and they are entered, upon jannah. They are entered into Jannah with ease and they are told that there is no grief. And there is no sorrow for you today. May Allah make us amongst those people. Inshallah. Qulu ameen. Wa akhudu da'u alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.